So we're here at the Rhythm Centre in Kelston. The Rhythm Centre was set up pretty much as a result of uh, many years of uh, having to make small musical instruments in order to teach. So I started drumming. Lots of people wanted to drum. There were no drums around, so we started making drums out of plastic buckets and barrels and pipes and tunes. And so you really needed a workshop. You needed a place where you could sort of get down to it and make stuff. So it's a kind of a, a hub of rhythm-based music. Taiko Drummers came uh, to do some workshops initially about three years ago and then a couple of years ago they found that it was too noisy for them wherever they were and that's the problem with rhythm based uh, music making particularly if there's more than one or two or three so a lot of groups find that they can use a place for a while and then suddenly the neighbours get so annoyed <laughs> the police get called and then they get thrown out so we're in an industrial area here so it means that you know we're allowed to make certain levels of noise and it's acceptable <laughs> I have the good fortune of coming from a pretty good family, both musical parents, and uh, as kids they ensured that we learnt a variety of instruments from piano to xylophone to guitar and squeeze box and violin, although I didn't do that. And um, so we had a music room. I've only just realised that in fact what I'm doing now through the Rhythm Centre and some of the stuff that we're doing out in schools in the community is I'm bringing the music room out there so that others can have the experience of at least touching some of these precious, precious instruments that they've only heard of and give them a chance to go, oh yes, oh, I can actually do that. The moment you see kids starting drumming, their spirit lifts. So a lot of this music that's percussive is spirit lifting stuff. One day I saw on the Western Leader, Blockhouse Bay Boat Club sends out SOS. And the interesting thing is just about a year before that I'd taken a friend down to the area and I was just, God, look at that old building. What would we do if we got our hands on that? So I called up the Commodore who was saying that the club was struggling, the building was being vandalised, which it was, it looked really shocking. And it, they were looking for somebody or some group to take it over and I was thinking, gosh, a venue! Now it's a premier environment, but particularly for acoustic musicians, but there's a lot of dance and a lot of voice work and some very special community meetings have been held there. And what we found is, is that just by walking down through the environment way to the point by the time you get to the boat club, you walk through the door and there, everywhere you look, is this beautiful panorama framed by windows of the ocean, uh, the landscape in the background. And that itself is an uplifting experience. At the end of WOMAD two years ago, the Gyuto monks from Tibet had a booking to go to Rotorua, which suddenly got cancelled on them. So a friend who was there said, hey Fraser, the Gyuto monks are here and they've got nowhere to go. And we says, great, let's get them up here. So they thought we were just a bunch of hippies, you know, they thought, you know. So, so, but as soon as they came here and they, we said, look, the boat club's yours. And so they fell in love with the place and so then they returned a year later and provided, uh, again, similarly workshops and chanting and, and healing rituals that are really quite unique and quite special and life transforming for a lot of people. The, it's a tragedy what's happening to them and their families in Tibet. And for us to be able to offer them this open-hearted, loving support for them helps them. Yet, what they seem to keep giving is a huge model for us. Got involved this year with the Titarangi Music Festival again. It's my local community. The first part of the series of workshops for kids up to about 12, I think. So we got kids and mums and dads and all sorts. <laughs> It's quite a mission. Have you heard of the expression of, of wheelbarrowing frogs? <laughs> or, or herding cats? <laughs> but I've discovered that 
when you provide little bits of organized tuition and little bits of suggestions, they can take them for a little period of time and work with them and make it their own. But it's interesting to see that they don't need any help. They'll go straight to these instruments and they're away, you know. So it could well be that the music that they hear on the inside of themselves is symphonic. Ah, trash to music is... Uh, I'm still discovering what it is, but um, it came about as a result of being involved in the Trash to Fashion Awards many years ago. And um, of course, I was always been aware of great groups like Stomp and Strike in New Zealand, of taking just found sounds, choreographing them rhythmically into very playful and colourful results or soundscapes. So we sometimes used to supply little interludes of trash-made music for the Trash to Fashion Awards. And then I just thought, oh, hang on, we've really got to do this properly. So I applied to the creative communities for a small fund to enable me to go out into the schools or out into the community to encourage kids to be looking at all the different things that make sound. So, you know, lots of things make sound. First workshop where we had two of the most famous doyens of music from found sources, Lindo Francis from the Auckland College of Education and Phil Dadson from the group From Scratch. And um, over many, many, many years they have been pioneering away using just unique and different sorts of things to create sounds. And Phil Dadson, he's had performance after performance that has really stretched people's imaginations, just using some of the simplest of things, right down to just two stones. You see, set up this option for all these teachers and students to come by and just be stimulated and I couldn't believe the array of things that, that have actually been in each of these people's including my workshop to produce all these different sorts of sounds so we'll see what happens as a result of that. This life, this planet we're living on is, is a heaven of heavens really and we have to see it and sometimes it's just by getting involved in these sorts of things that shift our consciousness out of what's wrong that um, gives us the uh, fresh eyes to see things better. If you're involved in things that are creative, positive and are good, then um, it's just good for the energy and the ambience and the, um, the well-being of people because when you stop and listen to some people's lives, they are in terrible suffering. And so getting involved in creative projects like music, which doesn't involve words, is just really more about body, being and heart and soul. It just removes them and they, after a period of an hour and a half of just drumming or whatever it is, the whole emotional side, everything else is transformed, is remarkably so. so um, I just can't help it, I've got to get in there and <laughs> do it.